It's the breakfast. And plus, TV Africa, as always, we take you through the pages of a national dailies. We have Ezekiel Yaito who joins the conversation. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us this morning. My pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. All right, Ezekiel Yaito is a public affairs analyst and uh, he's a very patriotic citizen of Nigeria. Uh, let's look at uh, the leadership this morning. On the leadership, we take a look at the bold headlines or the banner caption, if you like to put. Uh, the bold story here says, 40 days to presidential primary, APC moves to avert clash of interest. Party neck concedes powers to the National Working Committee. Uh, that's boldly written. CSO's kick as APC pegs presidential nomination forms at 100 million naira. Governorship, 50 million. Its party affairs, says INEC. President Mohamed Buhari wants again to imposition of candidate. That would mean that the, P um, the APC will not be tilting towards you know, the consensus. Just maybe. Um, Adamu blames governors for crisis and party urges unity and party interest. These are the writers underneath the bold caption. And you also have another bold header here saying, World Bank asks federal government to reconsider four trillion naira fuel subsidy. Uh, <laughs> interesting. 43,008 Nigerian pilgrims to perform 2022 the hija, uh, that's what you find. Train attack, Aerofire gives nine victims, family, 18 million naira. And just before we move away from the leadership, you also find troops kill 25 terrorists and rescue six captive in Lake Chad. These are the headlines on the leadership newspaper. We're straight now to the daily independent newspaper. Now, outrage trails APC 100 million naira, 50 million naira presidential Guber forms. Uh, we term riders their participation in election now business to earn profit, according to lawyers. Uh, say political parties have transformed to revenue collectors. Hirua condemns APC, urges arrest probe of form buyers. Commercial exercise will dampen hopes of the nation that is Sislak. I'll deploy tougher measures in tackling insecurity uh, that's attributed to the President, Mohammed Buhari. Uh, we are at risk of losing 2023 election, the APC chairman is saying, uh, lament supremacy battle between governor's predecessors. Party adopt indirect primaries next seats pass to NWC. Uh, just uh, beneath the pictorial there, 2023 presidential election, PDP in dilemma over consensus as 17 jostle for party's ticket. On EB rates fire me over salaries of record exo staff. More stories, COVID-19, Buhari gives minister deadline to submit vaccine production report and other stories also making headlines on the Daily Independent newspaper. Away from the Daily Independent, a quick look at the punch here. It talks about the presidential primary, APC silent on zoning. Nigerians condemn 100 million naira nomination form, even though you have uh, some quarters saying, I mean, including the INEC saying, uh, it is actually a party concern. Now, uh, underneath says it will encourage corruption. These are what citizens are saying. No, it will deter on serious aspirant, Chief Ten of APC's quoted to say, governors remain state leaders at the more ones factions. Indirect primaries likable, that's what you're, or likely, uh, that's what's been quoted here. Do not repeat PDP's mistake, Buhari is uh, saying to the APC, of course, position on zoning out soon. Uh, that's what the spokesman's quoted to say. And away from all of that. But you also know that it is stipulated that, um, uh, you know, the parties should inform, INEC should understand what um, mode of, if you're going to have the primary election, they should understand what pattern Process of voting, voting that you're going mm -hmm. to, you know, apply. So I really don't understand, uh, you know, the whole back and forth and the dilly darling with the APC now. Uh, but um, also looking at this, you find power tariff shortfall hits 247 billion naira. Governors cleared debts in December, that's what the federal government report is quoted to say, and foreign varsities from 4 trillion naira subsidy budget, as it tells the federal government. 
Imports and forex restrictions worsening food inflation in Nigeria. The World Bank is quoted on all of that. And uh, we just take another before we move away. Kaduna crash. Late pilot's family laments the NAF begins probe of what could have actually caused that crash. And 131, 376 retirees withdraw 300 and, oh, I beg your pardon, 32 billion naira mm, quit pension scheme. That's what the PENCOM is quoted to say. Lagos please grill Chrisland and parents over people's sexual acts. Quite interesting. Uh, for the want of time, we'll just really leave it at that this morning on The Punch. Very quickly, the Nation newspaper, the main caption for this morning, the mid-headline, that is, uh, Buhari cautions APC against uh, imposition of candidate. And most of the papers uh, have that as one of your lead stories. How the uh, decision on Darye Nyami was taken uh, by President uh, CJN warns judges against illegal wealth flamboyance. Uh, train attack, Kaduna gives families of dead victims 18 million naira. Gunmen abduct four family members in Abuja and other stories also making headlines on the nation newspaper this uh, Thursday morning. Ezekiel Yaitok, it's good to have you join us once again. We appreciate your time as always. Thanks for having me. All right. I'm ready for you. So, so let's get straight to it this morning. I mean, dominating almost all of the pages, it talks about um, the nomination form of the APC. 100 million naira that's gotten several Nigerians talking about the fact that this will always and has always aided corruption. Yeah, what, what bothers me about some of these things is how you get a blind man to drive a car and you are so shocked, so surprised that the car crashes. I don't understand. APC have told you in every way imaginable that they are an a state capture SPV. You know, and when you are there, a good businessman looks at you know the market. When the demand is high, the price goes up because he's a businessman. And when the demand is low, the price comes down. Right now, for one reason or the other, people have come to see that, wow, there is so much money to be made in government. They've come to see that if you are in government, your sins can be forgiven. They've come to see all sorts of things and have a certain mindset about government and governance, all thanks to APC. And as a result, every outgoing governor wants to be a president. Every businessman wants to sponsor somebody who will become Mr. President and they will be able to do their bidding. Nigeria has become commercialized. And as a result, APC, being good business people, see the market ripe for some harvesting. If they can harvest 100 million from 20 people, that is clean, clear 2 billion that goes to the party for administration. And don't think in terms of 36 states having at least, say, 10 governors, and that gives you about 300 and you get 50 million from each, just do the math and go to the Senate where you have 109 constituencies times X amount of money times X number of people, and then go to the House of Reps where you have about 360 of them. Don't even think of House of Assembly. These guys are raking in money in the trillions by my simple calculation. Because of that, they are doing what they know best to do. You and them are singing from two different song sheets. You are talking about government and governance. They are thinking of the enterprise and the business called politics. So why are you surprised that a goat is eating yam or that the monkey is eating the banana? I mean, who is to be blamed at this point in time? That's number one. Number two, 
I put the blame again, squarely and to a great extent, on the doorsteps of the media. Why do you want us to believe that outside APC PDP, we don't stand a chance? And I hope that one day I have a chance to let you know the lie that has been... You see, I've been in politics for a long time. I've contested governorship twice. I've been the chairman, ward and local government congress committee of the PDP to one of the states, which is one of the highest assignments you can have in party. I've been a national chairman of a party. I understand the mindset of politicians. They give you a narrative that suits them, that distracts you from the fact. And you run with the narrative while they are doing, you know, there's this Yoruba proverb, I'm told, that a man that will not allow you to eat while you are preparing your food, prepare his own, so that when he is busy eating his own, you are busy eating your own. And this is what the politicians are doing. That's their stock in trade. We sort of, they know that if you go, there is an electoral act that we have not done an analysis, the synthesis of that electoral act, which we need to do to tell people what, what is going on. So they distract us with all these things, and then we forget. And the time that we have been using to tell people, you don't have to bother again, the game has changed. People don't know that the game has changed with the new electoral act. So we're running coming interest about APC, PDP, APC, PDP, APC, PDP. And one day we are going to wake up, it's election time. And then we start to say, oh, terrible country, terrible leaders. And it just becomes this evil cycle. You know, you know. finally on this note, you know, there's certain things that the Bible says, and you really don't, it doesn't hit you until something comes. I've read the, on the Bible so many times, the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. I've heard it until last night. I was watching the publicity secretary of um, APC on one of the channels, and they asked him about the form. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Does this young man or old man have a hard time trying to justify what was absolutely unjustifiable, trying to explain the absolute unexplainable, trying to answer a question that his face and his voice we're in two different directions. And I understood what the Bible meant when he said the way of the transgressor is hard. That's my few comments on that, Mark. All right, uh, let's uh, look at all the stories uh, also making headlines. Uh, on the Nation newspaper, the president uh, is cautioning the APC, still talking about uh, the ruling party uh, in Nigeria. Buhari cautions APC against imposition of candidates. Uh, so let's get your take concerning that. You just talked about uh, the publicity secretary of the APC. Uh, the, yeah. Yesterday he was uh, fielding the, uh, questions uh, you know, from journalists uh, on, on another station, and he was talking about how they were not decided yet on zoning, on uh, <laughs> you know, mode of um, primary. But uh, right now the president is actually cautioning the party against the uh, imposition, which means that there may be some likelihood of the party considering that in the first instance. You know, you know, I, I took a decision and, on a, you know, integrity is hard. It's an expensive commodity. Mm. I took a decision which I announced publicly and I want to try as much as possible to stick to that decision. The decision was that because Mr. President has signed the Electoral Act, that I have forgiven not just all his past acts, I've even forgiven him ones. in advance anything he will do. So whatever I'm going to say now is going to come with a caveat that I have forgiven in advance because of that electoral act. Mr. President is just two-faced, in my opinion. He, I don't understand him. I don't know if he, he has a double life. I don't understand. There's something about him I don't understand. You are the one that everybody comes to in the party to take a decision. You are the one that the party waits for at all times, which I think was absolute lack of strategic thinking. Now, you are telling us two things. I don't know if you get to that part. The first thing is that he's going to get tough on, you know, on, on, um, on um, terrorists and on, you know, all these uh, insecurities. He's going yes. to get tough. After 70 years, and you have less than one year or thereabout to go. 
We are just telling you, go top. I beg, just leave it like that. Let's just believe God and pray and manage and you leave the stage. And secondly, you are saying, we don't want to imposition. What's the meaning of that? I need to understand. What's the meaning of that? Because I've sat down and thought about it. What's the meaning of we don't want imposition? Imposition means what? You have said you are going to have indirect primaries. What are you trying to say? And let me even say something which maybe you will come to with time, which is um, the, the neck ceding its powers to the NWC. You see, in Nigeria, there are aspects of the law that the National Assembly can tinker with. But there are certain aspects that must go through the 36, you know, houses of our assembly in all the states and the FCT. The reason is that certain decisions are so fundamental that they must reflect the, you know, the decision, the mindset, and the opinion of the whole country because such decisions are policy decisions that bind the country. It's the same thing, like I said before, I've been a national chairman of a party. It's the same thing with the party. They have the neck, which represents the whole country, and then the NWC, which is representative in a microcosm status. For instance, in the National Assembly, you have everybody from all the states of the Federation, but the Houses of Assembly have a wider cons cons consultation reach before coming. That's why you have neck as different from NWC. That's why NWC handles the day-to-day -day running of the system, and then the neck is like the board, is like, is like the bigger policy body, you know? And then you now come and say that the duties of that body should be seated. It's like saying, State and House of Assembly, don't bother. If, you know, National Assembly, go ahead and, um, you know, adjust the Constitution, because time is short. When the time becomes short, I thought we knew election cycle was going to be four years from today. To the best of my knowledge, I've not seen that that thing was shut, shut into a few months. APC knew. That is why they didn't even have a management until some weeks back, after seven years. And now, because they don't want you know, to lose that, I don't even know their reason. They are now ceding the power of neck to NWC to take decisions on the presidential or yes yes on the, that that should be taken at a much larger level they say because to bring the people back to take such a decision within short times might be difficult did we just shift elections from 4 years to 4 months i think that this thing that APC and they really want to come back to power and they actually believe that Nigerians are waiting for them to come back. They really don't think that we can think. But I want to tell you that there are one, two, three provisions in the Electoral Act that we need to highlight. In the past, I just bring out one, just one, just one. In the past, we used to have this situation where, you know, elections, uh, primaries drag, drag, drag to September, October, November. And before you can say, Jack, it's Christmas, and by the time you come from Christmas, it's January, election comes, nobody is able to talk to you. As a result, they just, boom, come on the ballot, and you just go and start voting for people you don't even know anything about. I want to say that God bless INEC, and God bless the civil societies, and God bless Mr. President. God bless also the National Assembly for letting us know that the last day of submission of candidates gives you 180 days, six months, six months, not six weeks again, six months of you engaging the people and selling your candidate. And on the other hand, the second part, which is so important, is that your vote will be transmitted right from the polling unit. These two things put together gives Nigerians a completely different paradigm from what has been in the past. So we are going to have, let those people buy forms at, if they like, let it be one, one billion. Get it. I want to tell you that you are going to meet a group of Nigerians from a third party, which is what we call the third force or the alternate force. There's going to be somebody that will emerge. And we're going to have town hall meetings. We're going to have debates. We're going to have engagement. 
Nigerians are going to see for themselves. It's like in Accra Ibom said, you know, I'm, I'm contesting the governorship. And just three days back, we had a virtual debate. It was engaging. Three hours, eight of us. It was wonderful. It was amazing. Accra Ibom people started to say, wow, this is something. And that was even before candidate. The next one is going to be with the candidate. And I'm happy to announce that I'm already one prime to be a candidate because my party is as uh, in, the con in the Congress, we had adopted me as a sole candidate for the party, understandably. And so I'm waiting for PDP. All right, so Ezekiel, I'm yeah, I took. Um, let's quickly share your thoughts on this one as we begin to round off on this one. Uh, it talks about World Bank and the concern for uh, the subsidy. I mean, we're looking at 4 trillion naira. According to the World Bank, they say increasing fuel subsidy uh, puts the Nigerian economy at high risk as subsidy payments may significantly impact on public finance as well as pose debt uh, sustainability concern. And uh, looking at the fact that 40 to 60 percent uh, our oil earnings were very dependent on oil for our earnings and of course 80 to 90 percent constitute our entire export oil is on top of that percentage and calculation. Uh, but what are your thoughts really? I agree completely with the World Bank and I've I've maintained this period right from the time of uh, President Jonathan. Subsidy is one fraud, one fraud that I'm, I'm shocked that my president could not, um, even having been the, the minister of petroleum. I, I, a lot of times I really don't understand him. Subsidy is a mega fraud on the poor. It is a major ripoff on the nation as a whole. There are so many things you cannot explain about the petroleum subsector. You can't explain about the daily quotas of production that we have. You can't explain about the different seedings that have been done. You can't explain so many things. You can't explain why refinery cannot be built in seven years. There are so many things you can't explain. You can't explain the volume of the so-called buyback that we have. You can't explain the subsidies. There is a lady, um, lady Mrs. Um, Esther Ogwe or something like that, that was the head of PPMC, that was relieved of her duty. Let Nigerians go back to her and find out why she was relieved, because she actually went on the floor of the Senate to testify about certain things. But that matter has been swept under the carpet. But one day it will come up. The whole concept of subsidy is... Is, is a few handful of people feeding fat to the detriment of the generality of Nigerians. I say it and I say it again. I, as an individual, I consume more fuel on a daily basis than my whole village put together. By the time you have one, two, three, four, five, six SUVs, the amount of fuel you get, and I'm subsidized for every liter of fuel that I buy, I'm subsidized for it. But you are now equating me with that guy on the street that is trying to buy a little fuel for his generator or for his, um, you know, pump, uh, whatever he's using it, maybe the guy who does a vulcanizer or the hairdresser who uses just about 10 liters for God's soul. Meanwhile, I take about 10 to 15, 20 times that on a daily basis. You are subsidizing me. You are not subsidizing that, that little person. Can we just move around and come at an honest economic, you know, uh, factor that will target those people and then give them that leverage to even buy those things free of charge on a daily basis? Meanwhile, use that money in a way that benefits the poor. Subsidy is a fraud. Subsidy has to be looked into very, very well. All right, uh, we must say a very big thank you to you, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyeetuk, for all the thoughts that you have shared on the off the press segment at this uh, morning we do appreciate your time thanks so much and god bless you both yeah god bless you too it is to the breakfast and plus tv africa we'll go back this day in history and see what happened and when we come back we'll be going straight to our first discussion for the day to join us again for time.